Hello, I'm Nathan Cruz and today I'm going to be evaluating a film review of the movie Gone Girl titled No Job, No Money, and Now No Wife, written by Manola Dargis. Now moving more on to the meat on the bone of this article. No Job, No Money, and Now No Wife evaluates David Fincher's film adaptation of Gone Girl by carefully dissecting key plot points within the film, like any review would. But where Manola Dargis stands out is her knowledge regarding David Fincher's style as a director, and the key elements he normally uses in his films, which then allows her to also explain the intentions and messages behind the many elements that David Fincher incorporates. Periodically, Dargis also compares the novel and film, specifically in the structure, and the different things each version does differently. In the sixth paragraph of her review, Dargis places an emphasis on Fincher's prowess regarding the ability to incorporate many film elements to convey a haunting but violent world by saying, Mr. Fincher's compositions, camera work, and cutting are as always superbly controlled. Working again with the cinematographer Jeff Cronenworth and the production designer Donald Graham Burt, he fashions an ever more haunted, haunting world that wavers so violently between ordinariness and aberration that, as in his other movies, the two soon blur. This sentiment that Dargis highlights is specifically shown in the infamous scene where Amy brutally kills Desi by slashing his throat, in which the composition is in the form of Trent Reznor's At Risk, which is perfect for the scene as it just is as haunting as the throat slashing, to be honest, therefore helping to convey how violent and haunting Amy truly is, which was certainly the intention of Fincher and Reznor. As for the cam work aspect of this scene, we were given one of the more memorable shots of the movie, that of course being Amy covered in blood as she is towering and overpowering Desi, who is slashed like an animal. The shot slash camera work in this scene will obviously convey the haunted world that wavers so violently, as Dargis puts it, for not only the gore but also how the cinematography helps portray Amy as overpowering in control, as the camera work puts her in positions where she is trampling over the body of Desi and showing how calculated and emotionless Amy is during this as you see here on the slide, which only adds to the credibility of Dargis' sentiment regarding Fincher's prowess regarding the ability to incorporate many film elements to help convey a haunting but violent world. Now taking a look at another quote by Manola Dargis in which she comments about the theme of subjectivity seen within the story of Nick by saying, Mr. Fincher, for all his modern themes and bleeding edge technologies, is a classicist, and in Gone Girl, he creates a sense of Nick's subjectivity the usual way by mostly placing the camera next to the character and deploying point of view shots that are seamlessly integrated with shots of and generated by other characters. This subjectivity that Dargis is talking about is obviously referring to Nick's daily struggles in battling with trying to prove his innocence to his community, the public, and the media, all of which have already had their judgments and agendas about him seemingly set. And in this scene you see right here where Nick is giving his statements regarding Amy and addressing the elephant in the room regarding the rumors spread by the media that he was involved in Amy's disappearance. We see exactly what Dargis describes. The camera shot being next to Nick while also integrating other characters and in this case Amy's parents and the whole crowd eagerly waiting to hear what Nick has to say. Which is meant to convey the pressure and subjectivity that Nick is feeling right in that moment. In this shot, he is surrounded by people, but yet he essentially stands alone on the stage, knowing that deep down inside, he knows what everyone else is thinking and the games the media is playing. David Fincher is able to convey isolation and the pressure of the media steadily upticking in this shot. While well, I have chosen to highlight more of the positives, Manola Dargis is not all praises when it comes to the film adaptation of Gone Girl. For example, she criticizes the film by comparing it to the intended structure of the novel by saying, Along with Mr. Affleck's supple, sympathetic performance, Amy's voiceover tips the scale so far in Nick's favor that it upends Miss Flynn's attempt to recreate the even Steven dynamic from her book. Dargis essentially is saying that Ben Affleck and Rosamund Pike are so good at their roles as Nick and Amy that it ends up leading for viewers to gravitate towards Nick at the start of the film instead of it being a well-balanced tug and pull. Since Ben Affleck plays a relatable screw-up husband part really well, and Rosamund Pike really plays the psycho, creepy, scorned wife eerily well. Another thing to consider is the novel having more time to allow both Nick and Amy to expand more in their journal 
entries unlike the film which is obviously condensed to fit time limits also therefore contributes to diluting the effectiveness of the film and following the intended structure of an even Steven dynamic as Dargis puts it. Tying it back to our class now that we have gone over this review I can calmly say that no job no money and now no wife highlights the respective impacts of different forms of literature, both negative and positive. Power and gender through the analysis of Nick and Amy, the media's impact on us, and allowed me to critically evaluate a review regarding literature, which all of these components are what our class is about. Thank you all for listening.